Welcome back to University Speaks, the show by students for students. I'm Anthony Ramos. And I'm Maria Dibut. Today, we've got a lot to cover from COVID mandated vaccines to a local band that is gaining a strong following. We are first going to take a look at Southern Nevada's vaccination rates and learn more about the vaccine after nearly a year of being released. Today, I talked with Dr. Brian Levis about his work and the current trends of COVID vaccination rates. Here's the story. I'm an infectious disease epidemiologist and assistant professor at the UNLV School of Public Health. Okay. My research involves communicable disease surveillance, which is tracking the diseases that spread in our community. Well, we see different rates of disease within our community. The thing that's driving it right now is some big differences in vaccination rates. The lowest vaccination rates tend to be in the youngest people in our population. And throughout this pandemic, they've had the highest rates of disease. Every group is affected differently. And then when you start to look at uh, sex or age or race or ethnicity, we start to see all sorts of different trends in it that are driven by who you are, the type of contacts that you have with the people around you. So we can generalize some things, but it really comes down to your day-to-day -day interactions with other people and that's how your risk of disease develops. The vaccine has been around for uh, over a year now. Uh, we've been using it widely for this entire calendar year. And worldwide, we've given out over 5 billion doses of this vaccine. From everything that we've seen through testing in different countries and use throughout the world, this is a safe vaccine. And we know that about one out of every 200 people that get the vaccine or to get the uh, disease die from the disease. Those who get the vaccine, uh, we've had a few people get serious problems from it. But out of 5 billion doses, those things are very, very rare, especially compared to the, the uh, disease itself. Well, most recently in the data, we've seen things start to decrease in Southern Nevada. Uh, for most of the summer, we saw a continual increase. When we got to the beginning of August, things started to plateau. But in Southern Nevada, things are heading in the right direction. And with the vaccine mandate, we expect numbers to continue to head in that direction. The vaccine is also becoming a requirement in order to enroll for classes in the spring semester. I spoke to some students on campus about their thoughts and how to submit your vaccination card to the registrar. As COVID vaccines become more readily available for everyone, UNLV is now requiring students and faculty to be fully vaccinated for the start of the spring semester in 2022. If the individual is not fully vaccinated before the spring semester, they may not be able to sign up for in-person classes for the spring. According to the registrar Sam Fugazzato, the acceptable vaccines are the one-dose Johnson & Johnson, two-dose Pfizer, two-dose Moderna, or for international students, any COVID vaccine approved by the World Health Organization. Students must submit proof to the UNLV Self-Help Service website under immunizations by November 1st to be able to sign up for in-person classes. Students around campus have mixed feelings about the mandate, however. I am for the vaccine mandate on UNLV's campus, and I was long before the State Board of Health approved the mandate as well. But I think it's because I think it's a really integral component to making students feel more comfortable on campus and also making sure that not only are masks our only line of protection, but also vaccines are that secondary line of protection because it's already kind of scientifically proven that you're less likely to contract COVID if you have the vaccine. Yet, some students don't like the mandate put into place. I would argue that I am against it, not only at UNLV, but uh, nationally, at a national level, uh, because being a United States Marine Corps veteran, I feel like I fought for our freedom, and I feel our government has become tyrannical and no longer cares about the safety of its citizens just about controlling them and how far they can take that control and power. Vaccines are free and available at the Student Health Center and other clinics around Las Vegas. If you have any questions about how to upload your vaccine card, call or email the UNLV Registrar. To submit your COVID vaccine card, visit unlvcrmforce.com forward slash self-service forward slash s forward slash immunizations. Back to you, Anthony. YouTube will begin banning prominent anti-vaccine activists and other anti-vaccine content. YouTube will be banning any videos that claim certain vaccines approved by officials are dangerous and unnecessary. Researchers suggest that the growing amount of anti-vaccine content on YouTube is contributing to the skepticism surrounding the COVID-19 vaccine. Vaccination rates across the U.S. have been decreasing 
as of recent with just 56% of the population vaccinated with both shots. YouTube is just one of the social media platforms to implement this change, joining both Facebook and Twitter. Did you know that Hispanic Heritage Month is recognized from September 15th to October 15th? So what is a better way to celebrate this month than to recognize two Hispanic students at the most diverse campus and learn more about them? Marissa Patton is a senior at UNLV with a major in microbiology. So I represent the Latinx community and the Hispanic community. So specifically, that's the um, country of Chile. Jason Amanillo is a junior with a major in communications. So I'm, I'm Mexican-American. Although both students have completely different majors, both of them share a huge passion, their families. Well, for me, I know family is like, like that. You know, we're, we're very close. It's always family first. If you need to work for your family, you work for your family. Um, if you need to be there for your family, you're there. You know, it's like blood is blood. Blood's thicker than water, everyone says that. Um, so to me, I do come from a mixed family, but on the Hispanic side of my family, we always prioritize each other. For me personally, it's whenever I've had a downtime, something hasn't worked out, um, an opportunity has just unfortunately fallen through. Um, family has always been the, the people that I rely on either for advice or just to kind of cheer me up or just kind of give me the confidence that I, I have needed. Both Marissa and Jason realize how much of a blessing their family is but there are still struggles that come with being Hispanic. You know, Mexicans have had to go to the Supreme Court to be allowed to have an education and all of that. I am trying to go into healthcare and working in healthcare um, as a nurse's assistant. Um, specifically, I've gotten to realize that there are so many Spanish speaking individuals, specifically in the Las Vegas community alone. And the issue we're having is that language barrier. And when you're, you know, not only healthcare, but anywhere, talking about super important information, you can just miss all of this information and you're not knowing what you're signing, you're not knowing what you're doing, you're not knowing what's going into your body per se. And it's super important to have that language barrier gone because we need to be able to communicate that important information to not only people who speak English, but to the entire community. Here are a few words about what Marissa and Jason want people to take away from Hispanic Heritage Month. There are so many Hispanic countries in this world, right? You're talking about South America, Central America, even if we're going to um, Hispanic, let's talk about Spain. Um, and when you're talking about all of the countries in general and the contributions they've made to the United States or the world in general is huge. So I'd want them to take away the history and I'd want them to take away that it's okay to embrace your own culture and that, you know, no matter where you're from, you know, a lot of people like to show an exterior no, I'm, I'm just Caucasian, I'm this. And then you dig deep down, they're Irish, or they're, they've got a little bit of Indian in them, or whatever it is, and just embrace it. I hope this month teaches them to just embrace who they are, and don't just go to the activities because they're fun. Try and, try and learn something, and, and take, take away from, from this month. Take something away. Celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month with your friends, your family, and just remember to respect all cultures every month. Back to you guys. As a member in the Hispanic community, I can definitely agree that we are close to our families. Um, family is a huge thing in my life, friends, and my family likes to make sure that my friends feel like family. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that your family probably feels the same way. The exact <laughs> same way. Friends can come over. Yes. Our house is their house. It's a, it's a big yeah. thing. We just like feeling the love as family and friends. I have a friend, every time I go to his house, his mother is the nicest person in the world. She's always And they make food for you? Every yes. time, every time. <laughs> That's like, it's amazing. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. And I can't wait to learn more about Hispanic heritage as the month continues. UNLV's ROTC Ranger Challenge team has been training hardcore since the beginning of the semester to compete in the National Ranger Challenge event being held on November 5th. It is known as Army ROTC's Varsity Sport. UNLV's team was formed at the beginning of the semester and are training rigorously until the regional event in California on November 5th. If they win at the event, then they move forward in the sport to compete at the national level. The activities included are day orienteering, basic rifle marksmanship, and written land navigation testing. Good luck to our UNLV Ranger Challenge team. Now let's hear from another UNLV team that are making projects that are out of this world. 
Welcome back to University Speaks. Today I have Victor Tokshayev from RebelSat with me. Hi Victor, how are you? Good, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. So, for the people that may not know what RebelSat is, can you explain what it is? Yeah, so RebelSat is an organization that we developed about a year ago. And it's an aerospace club, basically, where we want to create a small satellite that we send to orbit. It's going to be the first of its kind, so it's really exciting. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So what made you start it? Yeah, so I was previously in another club called SEDS. I'm still in it, but it's, it's also an aerospace club. Um, and a bunch of friends and I from that club wanted another aerospace club at UNLV because we don't really have an aerospace program. So we decided to create the satellite club, which is RebelSat. How many of you are in there? So it started off around like five to ten people, but now we actually grew to over 200 active members in our Discord. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's super <laughs> exciting. Yeah. So you guys won the Rebel Award, the yep. new organization Rebel Award. How did it feel winning that at, and being so early, only one year old? <laughs> yeah, it felt awesome because there's just been so many things that we had to do to get to this point. Um, you know, get funding, get advisors, make sure the club is still active over that year. So it kind of felt like we grew our startup into an actual like company. Um, and that felt awesome because the award kind of recognized that. Uh, what are you guys planning to do in the year to come or in the years to come? Do you guys accept more people coming in? Yeah, definitely. So right now we wrote a proposal that we sent out to NASA to get more funding. Uh, we hope that NASA accepts that proposal so we get even more money to actually buy the hardware for the satellite. Um, we also are planning to build it, test it, um, and then ultimately launch within the next couple of years. Oh, that is so exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else do you guys have planned as of, like, is there any requirements, sorry, is there any requirements that a person needs to join you guys? Or can anybody join? Yeah, so um, we... we we're open to anyone. Um, as long as you're willing to learn and are dedicated to the club, then you have, there's no problem with you joining. Uh, there's no like requirements for technical knowledge. We can teach you um, and you'll learn a lot just by being active in the club. So I wonder, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people, what is the CubeSat itself? Can you explain like how it works, what it is? Yeah, definitely. So a CubeSat is just a small satellite. Uh, and they come in different sizes, but ours is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 30 centimeters, so about this big. Uh, and they have different payloads on them, which are just like experiments. Our experiment is going to be a new way to move CubeSats in space using a thruster. So it's, it's really exciting. Wow. Yeah. Um, do you guys plan to make more? Or for now, you're just focusing on that one? Uh, we definitely want CubeSats to be a thing at UNLV after we graduate. So this is like the foundation CubeSat, yes. the first <laughs> one. Uh, but after that, we hope that these new students that come in continue our legacy and build more and better CubeSats. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Victor, for coming in today. Yeah. And I wish you the best. And we hope that to see it on space yeah. and to make UNLV proud. You're already making us proud. So thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> Now we're going to go back to Anthony. All right, Maria, thank you. A local family business has the hearts and cravings of high school students. Reporter Sydney Lum has more. Family owned business, Bob's Eastside Deli, where they have home cooked Italian recipes and more for your enjoyment. Let's go check it out. Bob's Eastside Deli welcomes everyone to come in and eat some good homemade food in an environment that feels like home, especially since it's full of Bob's family who works there. They all work in uh, our stores between New York and here. I don't think I could run the store without them. And I'm very fortunate. I've had a, a really good run of good help, and uh, they've been with me for years. With Bob being able to run such a successful business for many years, one may wonder, what drove his passion to own and run a deli? I always wanted to feed people. I always wanted to make them happy. Uh, actually, uh, it goes back to when I was about six, seven years old. I had an uncle that had a luncheonette business in Brooklyn. Food and creating dishes has been a passion for Bob for his whole life. I like meatballs. I make, you know, I make meatballs. We make sausage and peppers at home. A lot of the stuff that's on the menu is all stuff that we make at home. Bob and his family, plus the other workers, make sure customers have a great experience every time they walk through the door. Our service, I think, is very good. We get our food out quickly, and uh, 
We've been lucky. People liked it and they keep coming back. A portion of their customers come from students from Del Sol High School, which is located right across the street. We, we try to take care of the kids as much as we can. I know over at the high school, uh, you know, I, I donate to almost every organization that's there. This local deli is about a five-minute drive from campus, and if you ask me, it sure is delicious. Signing off, I'm Sydney Lum with University Speaks. Anthony, this was a close to home story because I went to Del Sol and Bob's for any student at Del Sol, we know that is a big thing. After any game, after anything that mm. require any school events, we will go to Bob's and I have so many fond memories of Bob's and the food of course is amazing. That sounds amazing. I <laughs> yeah. haven't actually had the chance to go but I might check it out. You have to try it. It's it amazing. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, my favorite place to eat is at a sports game. Our reporter Dominic captured how UNLV hockey is returning to in-person events. Should be a great turnout. I am expecting a full crowd, standing room only. And when we score that first goal, just place go bananas. UNLV Rebel Hockey returns to the ice this month after a 20-month hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The team seems to have not skipped a beat in practices and have turned plenty of heads. The program is ranked first in their division and 10th in the American College Hockey Association preseason power rankings. The roster led by Captain Jared Erickson thinks the same of themselves, however, at a smaller scale. We definitely have high expectations. We want to be a top five team in the nation, which is uh, somewhere where we definitely see ourselves. We definitely have the speed and skill, so uh, I'm looking forward to pushing our team to that potential, and uh, we're excited for the first weekend coming up here. Erickson is one of the many veterans on the team that younger rookies like Michael Budasov, who's just trying to perform at the highest level possible in his first season, will look up to over the course of the year. But Budasov shares the same confidence that Erickson and head coach Anthony Greener have for the upcoming season. For myself, I'm just expecting to compete every game, day in and day out. Um, we have a very skilled team, so um, our confidence is high and we expect nothing but the best and go straight to the Nationals and uh, see what we can do there. We have high expectations, high standards. Uh, our goal is to win our division first, top, uh, make a high seed at the national tournament and go in there uh, and, and win a national championship. This has been Dominic Lavoie reporting for University Speaks. This local band is bringing their heart, rhythm, and fun to the city. Let's take a look into Shoy. Shoy was created back in 2018 when seven friends decided to create their own boy band after one of their members got kicked out of a performing arts high school here in Las Vegas. They like to consider their genre as a jazz, rap, fusion influence, but also bringing in a whole new perspective and listening experience to their type of music. We have these jazz influences and also like these fusion influences and rock influences and then we have the beautiful PT's influences right here. Um, and so it's like, I always say like jazz, rap, fusion, but there's, there's a lot more than just that going on, you know? Mama's got a lot of soup cooking in the kitchen. Uh, but it would be like, I don't know, the five, six of us in there, and we'd just be creating songs and just generating ideas with each other and just building it off of there. <laughs> As an up-and-coming band full of young members, they all have very fun anecdotes and memories of moments they have shared together. One of my favorite memories with Shoy is I think the first time that Liam actually texted me and was like, hey, PT, come over. We want to try some things out. And it was like years before, no, it was like two years, right? Two years ago when Shoy first had a plan to get started. And I remember walking into Sir's dad's studio and we just started jamming and vibing and we created a song that we still play today. So that's definitely one of my favorite memories. For the future of the band, they have a couple ideal places where they like to play. Maybe the moon? So probably the only place that I can think of is like the NPR Tiny Desk. That the stuff Olympics. is so cool. The Olympics? Yeah, that'd be cool. The Olympics. Or with the moon. Yeah, we could go anywhere to be honest. So are they really gonna? Are they really planning on going hey, to the moon? Hey, listen, they're very confident about it, so I don't doubt it. Okay, would, and anything is possible. <laughs> I would love to I see. I would it. love to see I that. that would be <laughs> now let's hear from Lena in all things entertainment. 
This month was great for entertainment. Let's take a look at our favorites. Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings came out earlier in September and hit theaters by storm. The Marvel movie smashed the Labor Day box office records with a $71.4 million debut. However, the Broadway musical Dear Evan Hansen hit theaters later in the month with a lackluster debut in the box office, earning only about $7.5 million during opening weekend. In local art, UNLV's Marjorie Barrick Museum of Art released new art museums, such as Human Resource Exploitation, a family album, I Am Here, Hostile Terrain 94, and Seeing Scene, curated by Erica Vital Lazar. They are free to access and they are open Tuesdays through Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. This month was great for entertainment, and as COVID seems to be halting, live music, movie theaters, and art exhibits seem to be making a comeback. But is there anything else that you're looking forward to? Let us know by reaching out to us at UNLV Speak, UNIV Speaks UNLV on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Have you watched Shang-Chi yet? Yes, I have. It's such an amazing story. It's one of my favorite origin stories now, mm. so it's amazing. It <laughs> looks like it'll be amazing. I haven't been to the movies in a while. Yeah, it feels, <laughs> it feels great to be back at the yeah, movie theaters. So I think <laughs> one I have to check out on my yeah. list at the top. <laughs> That's all we have for today's show. Thank you for joining us.